Welcome to Checkpoint Real Talk, a podcast for security folks who want less F-U-D and more F-U-N. In each episode, we'll have lighthearted conversations about security, people, processes, and technology as we react to how they're portrayed in film and TV. We'll bring in experts from inside and outside Checkpoint to break it down. What was accurate? What wasn't? And what can you apply to real-world cyber events? On today's episode, host Sia Yesotornrat, Checkpoint Cloud Security Architect Alfred Trevino, and Mike Madero, VP Information Security, and Lionel L. Berry Jr., AVP Information Security at Mr. Cooper, react to the 1983 film War Games. So this is where they they've done their their research and they're trying the 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 guy's name uh, his boy's name because he had a boy that tragically died and then magically boom here they are getting in wow. through the back door and you know this is one of those things where even now if you do enough research on the people that wrote a given program you can sometimes find hidden nuggets like We're this. In. So social engineering is what we're saying. Basically, yeah, I mean, so but they were definitely. Happen. Yeah. And with, with the uh, world today, right, with the compute and the connectivity, oh, my gosh. That one little name may not have mean nothing 10 years ago. Today? Whatever it's programmed. That seven, it's the, uh, like the seven, what is it, the, with the Kevin Bacon? The, uh, six degrees of separation? Six degrees of separation, right? Yeah. So what may not have been, or what you may not have thought of been a uh, possible as as a, uh, as a, uh, you know, as knowing somebody or knowing something or having something that's valuable, boy, it's like, it's easy to connect that seven or six or seven degrees, right? Very yeah. Quick, very easy. Yeah, and, and the key thing here is, you know, it's more than just the, the back door. They, they'll tell you not to, you know, make your passwords after your kids or your pets or things like that. And in this case here, uh, the the author of the, the, per, the person that developed this computer system had a young boy that died right around the time that he was uh, building this machine. So they figured if he was going to have a, a secret password to get in, that would be it. And sure enough. Boom. They, yeah. The, the password requirements were definitely not as stringent as what they had. No, because it's not even eight characters. Or, no, it's, of course uh, not. Well, so isn't it like mainframe right there if I'm looking at? Yeah, and it's all frame? caps. So there there wasn't really a whole Which lot. Just like of, old school COBOL? Like like, come on. <laughs> this is the same stuff that the government was running on for the longest. So, you know, hey, yep, what yep. can we say? Oh, my gosh. Is this Cobalt? It is Cobalt they're they're playing with, right? Because it Potentially. predates this, right? Maybe Fortran. Oh, yeah. Fortran. <laughs> Fortran Assembler, one of, the, one of those three. Oh, my gosh. Oof. I guess we dating ourselves a little bit with that one. I had well, one of those as a coffee table for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> how, big a, how big of a player was Ada in uh, government uh, coding? <laughs> Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, so I have to say, um, I don't know if you guys saw it. Um, if we can just rewind just a little bit, was they want he's like, Hey, do you want to hear the voice of it? And I was like, Oh my gosh, like I just wanna like talk about real quick here because how much our voices, the whole AI voice technology has evolved just a little bit. I don't want to go heavy into it because that could be saved for another day. You but hear it talk? Yeah. Turns it on. I'll ask it how it feels. I'm fine. How are you? Excellent. <laughs> so it's a long way from Siri, isn't it? <laughs> I, I use an AI uh, it's called Murph. Murph.ai. Um, cool SaaS platform, but it is. It's all voice cool. translation. And it's amazing. Yeah. Amazing. It, it's. You know, oh, it, it's it's funny because you back in the day you always knew when you were talking to a computer. Yeah, yeah it, it wasn't fooling anybody. <laughs> uh oh, here we go. Shall we play a game? Yes. <laughs> look at these! Look at these graphics. I'm telling you that that screen that I remember that screen from computer science. It's like, oh my god, can we get some color? Yeah, it's a lot of green screen, right? Lot, yeah. Oh, I mean, come on. Okay, <laughs> let's ask this question, you guys. All Who right. would play on what team? Like, what would you pick? 
Well, mm. Which side of oh, you oh my gosh, and there's a there's a good view of the modem modem there. I'm about to say you want to ask that question. Which side do we want? It's either <laughs> the Soviet Union or the United States. Come on, I have to pick where I live. Yeah. Everybody else, you're you're guessing whether or not they do they really have nukes? Yes or no? Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. We don't really know. If the U.S. and Russia, you know. <laughs> There's no question. It's like okay. Oh yeah, they got him. <laughs> and everybody else like maybe. <laughs> okay, so this whole like uh, room right here, the 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 war game uh, situation room. Situation room. Um, so when I worked at uh, HP, we had a situation room space, right? And uh, we managed, you know, the EDS side of the house, the services like managed it, and they made it look like this. Ooh. And it looks really cool. It's like it was part of the, um, you know, tour uh, of our data center facilities here in uh, Dallas. And uh, I, I just cracked up because I'm like, war games, and everyone loves it, by the way. Mm. Why do we love that visual? How many knocks look like this before this movie? Man, that's true. Like, uh, yeah. how many afterwards? <laughs> Everybody. Everybody. I like the fact that you've got this one screen because I'm a monitoring guy anyway. Like, I'm back in the day. Yeah. But unless you know what's going on under the hood, uh, and it's one of those things, right? The CIO, CISO, whoever does a walk through, and we could look like we're not doing nothing every day. But these big giant screens on here that show attack vectors, that show a lot of greens and a lot of names that relate with the faces to the business. Holy folks, now I put my money out there and I'm getting my return. And that's what um, I grew up, uh, you know, seeing and visualizing and wanting to, wanting to do that. Which, uh, you know, we all know what's going on with the hood. It's protecting, doing all these different drops and security stuff, but you would never know it, right? Most people would never know it or even think about it. No, you just, just watch the blinky lights. Yeah, <laughs> it's a kind of a nice little visual indicator. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think what strikes me about this scene though is they were hacking in, but they were being naive. Like they didn't really think it was something real. Do you think, like, when there's teenage hackers, because there are a lot of like little like you know well, script so keying and all that stuff that you could yeah, use. Yeah. Like, do you I'm, think there's intention, or do you think more now, like as in human behavior, where they're just curious kids, or do you think now they're a little bit more savvy and they're yes, like, no, no, I'm going. Yeah, yes and no. Like, the, premise, yes and no. The, the, the premise here is he thought he was uh, he was trying to hack into a game company. Mm -hmm. And so he's hacking all these different companies in his area because he knows where that game company is located. But he hits the Whopper. <laughs> and so he starts looking up, well, what's this Whopper? He has an idea that he's onto something that's not what he was looking for because he starts researching who built it. That's but true. he has no idea where he is. He's he's not aware that what he's doing is that that level. He doesn't know he's at NORAD, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I'll, I'll take it back to like freshman year of college, right? Computer science, the FBI actually comes in to teach us. And the first thing they're telling us is there's a difference between hacking and cracking. Hacking, no malicious intent. Cracking, malicious intent. We actually hire hackers. Yeah. Wait, you actually do? They're like, yeah, we like when you can hack it because then you can help to plug the hole that you found. Okay. You don't know until you know, right? Right. So yep. I know for myself, you know, um, <clears throat> there might have been an instance or a couple where um, some <laughs> things might have been hacked. <laughs> it, it was completely unintentional, but I don't cool. think in this case, he actually had malicious intent. That's why I say it's yes and no. Now, nowadays, that's a whole different story. Kids are forward. <laughs> They're evil. Them kids. Like malicious. They're yeah. not cracking to see if they can do it. They're like, I want to do it, and I have intent. And there's so much of it out there that's sophisticated that anybody can run. And the way that things are connected now, holy smoke, that blast radius is, like, huge. It can be, yeah. depending on, you know, how they target it. I don't think the kids are, are so much doing it anymore. Just to, hey, look what I can do. Now it's like, well, yeah, anybody can do that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's nothing special. Now it's like, look how much I can make or how much can I get away with? Mm. So It's like upping up. It's escalating, if you will. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So let's talk about this next scene here that um, I picked up because I was watching this and I, ha I have thoughts. I have thoughts, gentlemen. So. And who hitchhikes anymore? 
<laughs> um, isn't that what Uber is, basically, in Lyft? Well, yeah, but you're, you're paying it. You know who's going to pick you up. You have some detail. Yeah, some assurance that, you know, and, and there's that, that handy button that says, hey, something's going wrong. You can share your details with somebody, where you're going, and they can track you. Um, so, this what, not so much. What, what is this that I'm looking at, guys? What is phone this thing? Book? That's a payphone. That's yeah, what no. Clark Kent used book. to run into Old school. and change into Superman and, and exit out. <laughs> yes, but I must and say, so Superman actually is, have, uh, like, most of his were three-fourth clothes, like, covered with the... The, the, the phone booth, like, was it actually one that's wide open like his, or was it the other one? Oh, I don't. Yeah, and now this is probably something else you guys haven't seen in a long time. He's going to find a pop tab. Yep. This is a piece of aluminum that used to tear off your coke can and drink. Juices. I think juices still have the pop juices tab. Still kind of have them, but it's more foil. And so there he, he grounds the the phone. To make it think that um, it's getting money, so he can make a call. Okay, money. first off, what is this thing he's holding? Yeah, that's the receiver. <laughs> you know, when you when you make a when you make your you're on the phone, that's why you you do this instead of just this. <laughs> you know, th th those phones that that are probably at your grandparents' house and in museums. Yeah, those. <laughs> you know, they actually have a head part and a phone part. You I, ran a, I ran across uh, a uh, uh, the phone booth, like a real one. And it wasn't working, but it was funny because I've got four kids. And about four or five years ago, we went to do this mud run, and it was on an Air Force base. And my kids were looking, you know, they're pointing at this little island out there. And there it was, this one lonely phone booth uh, that had been out there forever. But they were so uh, amazed by it. Um, Dr. Yeah, Dr. and everybody went to flock to it and uh, had to explain the whole phone booth thing. But yeah, it's hard. Like, you know, phone booth thing. <laughs> yeah. You know, I know there's been some videos about the whole ro rotary phone and all that. Thank you. It's a little unfair, but I don't recall ever seeing the rotary phone on a pay phone. I always thought it was buttons. I guess I I'm mm -hmm. a little behind the times on that. Yeah, well, I mean, when 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 Clark Kent was running into the original phone booth, they didn't have push buttons. They didn't. No, no. That's that's, that's fairly recent. Yeah, I think the like Christopher the, Reeve the, Superman, like late, late, yeah. yeah, no, 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 no. The, uh, the, the, yeah. the the black and white Superman. Okay, yeah. uh, that's Don Reeves or, or something. I, I Same know. last name, but first name were different. Perhaps I couldn't tell you. <laughs> So, uh, did you, anyone that cares for that a uh, little bit of trivia though that that first fifties uh, Superman mm -hmm. was unalived under mysterious circumstances? Mm -hmm. What? Either that, oh. or he committed, or he committed unalivement for himself. I forgot which oh. way he went. Weird. Oh no, I was confusing him with another TV show person, but he did unalive. I think self-induced. Oh, okay. I think, yeah, unfortunately, but. Uh, I digress. So, okay. I don't understand that technology, guys. Okay, so this is a form of hacking a system. What exactly did he do with that little push tin, connect it to the earpiece of the mouthpiece? Like, what was that happening? Does was, anybody know? Yeah, that that's the way they used to take advantage of the old copper phone systems. I mean, you, you could do uh, stuff like that to, you know, for the most part, a lot of people would want to make long distance calls without having to pay long distance. It it was quite expensive, still quite expensive. <laughs> if you, mm -hmm. you know, if you're making international calls, um, they discovered tones like different tones and frequencies, right? Would uh, so phone freaking and um, which is cool. I did that back in the day. Um, you know, you get your own little phone box, and there were several different ways. But fun fact is, those phone lines are still relevant and used at almost every um emergency if you've got a place that you know you need some uptime um where you need to get out because we think of our phones as being like pretty much 80 90 percent usable um but phone lines are freaking strong like at the end of the day underwater in the craziest circumstances phone lines work still uh, mm -hmm. as long as they get to the 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 provider the pop yeah the uh the, the pop location wherever it needs to go to that other end um, they're a lot more reliable, right? Yeah. So data centers, all those places, doctors, well, people have their dedicated phone. That's my bell. Everything is my bell. My bell um, yeah. owns every one of them. 
And it's crazy because she still owns the rights and the technology to all phone lines. Yep. And people just piggyback off of those. That's it. It's still hilarious. Okay, guys, full disclosure, Ma Bell, is that AT&T or no, that was... Uh, that's all the Bell, like, you got... That's uh, all of them now. Bell, all of them now? AT&T, yeah. all of them. They yeah. all were Ma Bell originally. Because, yeah, because yeah, it was that big old conglomeration. And I remember they bro- started breaking them up, right? The government. Yep. There. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's crazy, man. Oh, my God. Okay. So, I did not know that. And, okay, realistically speaking, scale of 1 in 10, you think, would a teenager back in the 80s know to do this? Yes. Yeah, I think so. 100%. Because even the 80s, like, computers were, like, a high, it, you know, um, it gained a lot of momentum, I think, with a lot of the younger folks. Yeah. Huh. yeah. Well, especially, uh, so there used to be something called a bulletin board ah, that you could dial yeah. into. Ah. And the, a lot of the bulletin boards were hooked up to something called FidoNet. Yep. Right? Mm-hmm. And you could literally send messages to people on other bulletin boards, uh, just like you do the Internet. And, you know, uh, your bulletin board would dial into a central location dump all the messages, get new messages, and uh, they'd, they'd propagate, right? And mm-hmm. the idea was so that um, you didn't, again, have to pay long distance because you'd hit a, a local or regional uh, drop-off point and all these messages would travel. So it was, in a, in a way, kind of a precursor to uh, some of the the internet things that, that hadn't really been exposed to the public yet. It was available if you were in maybe a university, you know, yeah, yeah. things like DeckNet and things like that, uh, but it wasn't hadn't really hit mainstream yet. And say, on these boards, they would the talk DMR? about they would talk about things like this, like orange boxes, the what mm-hmm. you would need to to do your phone freaking and all that stuff. So yeah, the the, the kids one hundred percent knew about a lot of this stuff. Oh yeah, I, well, I, a lot I, of the stuff they taught in school as well. Yep. So I know my school, they actually taught this. They actually had live working copies in the basement. So if you wanted to see it, you literally just had to walk down there and go look at it. So, Okay, maybe I don't know about you guys. I did not go to cool schools then because I did not see this. (laughs) I did not know. We were not of that genre. We were still doing like, like we still had an auto shop and that was like the extent of the technology that they afforded us like. I still have my like my platform book where it's got like a blue box, orange box, uh, red box. Right. They were all a little bit different. Yeah. But, you know, they would do, you know, different. They would approach it differently. But, yeah, I still got a manual downstairs. I think it's from the late 80s. Yeah. Do, you, do you think the kids today would look at this and go like, oh, OK, I get it. Or they'd be like, the heck do you people mm-hmm. do? Man, like the, the kids of the, the kids of cell phones. Right. You know, born and bred of the cell phone age. Man, that would be difficult, I think, for them to get this. I think so, because, too. Yeah, because, like, we we don't have to be, you know, um, we know how phone lines work. There's two, there's actually wires there, right? And yeah. I think everything that's built from, you know, late 90s, early 2000s has been progressed to wireless. So it's like, there's a layer there that most kids won't get. Yeah. No, okay. Well, hey, kids. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in the next, next clip you hear, because... This is the other thing that I thought was fascinating that, I, again, I have thoughts on this because I was like, this is a really smart kid. So if you guys don't mind the next clip. City, please. Yeah, for Sunnyvale, California, the number for ProtoVision. So, yeah, grabbing that five and a quarter five, sloppy eight, in a second, eight, right? Three, two. Yeah. Thank you. And could you also tell me what other prefixes cover that area? This There's is kind of funny. We're going to get to see a, an old school motor in a minute, too. Seven. <laughs> like the fact that he's got the intelligence to ask for all the zip codes, I like. Yeah. And then this. Oh what yeah. What is this? Is that app? He's bringing up that word dialer. Oh oh oh! You're. Uh, I'm ahead of you a little bit. Sorry. Oh yeah. That's the big eight-inch floppy. Vision. I have you now. There. He just put the phone on a modem, and so that the the speaker goes into the the computer and the, the computer speaks to the phone on the other thing and where well, we almost had the whole handshake memorized yeah. okay so basically what is it there's a there's only a finite amount of numbers right in a prefix and so if you think about a square or a grid you can plug in an area code and give it you know the prefix and then let the dialer or the application just run through right um mm-hmm. But yeah, the same exact, I, I did this probably, gosh, 20 something years ago when I was big into it. And I remember coming across a chemical company and getting in there 
And, and for the life of me, you know, going through it and I'm just sitting there, I'm just very early on. Um, but I was, so it, it's actually what progressed me or what kind of like kept me going to where I'm at now. Where I was like, man, it's just easy to do this. Let's see where we can take it. Let's keep going. I know as recently as the the mid late nineties doing a, uh, a war dialer uh, thing was part of doing an external penetration test. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. oh, so they were looking for people that had their, their routers on, on phone lines or they were connected directly so that admins could dial in and, and manage those devices. Um, and, you know, again, checking to see, did they change the, the admin password on it or were they still admin admin? And things like that. Um, also, oh, people are relevant. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, didn't that just happen today? Like, <laughs> kind of relevant still. Um, but you know, and but they would also have maybe uh, uh, somebody's workstation that was set up with PC anywhere, and you would dial into your machine so mm-hmm. that you could work remotely. And then PC you see anywhere. Oh, gosh. Do whatever. Man, you I know. I, yeah, yeah. you did bringing back like all sorts of memories. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 32 PC anywhere. Yeah, 32. Yeah. <laughs> but I will say war dialing nowadays is a lot different than it was back then. Yeah. yeah. You know, because back then you had to hope nobody called you in the middle of that process. Break your line. Yeah. Oh. Then it broke everything. You had to stop. Right. Call waiting didn't come about until late 90s. Yeah. So oh, when, when this movie came out, it was a start over. Wait, and start so over. <laughs> You'd put in your dialing prefix to cancel call waiting, so it wouldn't. Fit yeah, start whatever, and then bam, you're good, right? Yeah. <laughs> yep. I, oh my gosh. So, are these techniques still in use today, like from a cybersecurity perspective, as far as like some of that methodology of knowing that, like, it, it, could you code something where you could just hog the bandwidth, and so nothing else can come in, and or anything like that? Like, I'm just thinking, like you say, like with pods, <laughs> you know. Well, nowadays it's a DDoS attack. Yeah. Right? That that's really what that is. That's that's straight DDoS. Um, if I hit if I hit it enough, and I can do it with a ping attack, to be honest with you. Yeah. I, you can do it from any computer, just ping dash T dash L and then send it. But it will flood their network so much that mm-hmm. anything can barely get in or out. So it's like, yeah. can yep. you do it? Yes. Do you want to do it? No. No. <laughs> it's a good idea. Oh, yeah. And well, now they have more sophisticated ways to find you. So doing yeah, it now, a, don't now. You know, it, it's it's not as much fun in games as it used to be. I'll say that. No. Yeah, <laughs> I think there, there used to be a. I don't remember if it was a program or something, but the but the whole thing was got a minute. And what they would do is they would try to get as many of their listeners, subscribers, whatever, to all call one number for a minute. And it would basically saturate the the circuit for that number, and nobody could get through. <laughs> oh my gosh! Well, that's how you ended up with party lines as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everybody's dialing out at the same time, and eventually all the lines cross. Yeah, you only got X amount right for each one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh man, alive! I remember as a kid, like trying, like, oh, what do want to see? But then you would hear other people. You would inadvertently hear other people's conversations. It's a little weird. It's kind of like ghostly. And then also a little voyeuristic too, if you had that opportunity to it. But mm. <laughs> just saying, that, that is true. Yeah, that's probably yeah. where you wisdom started <laughs> <laughs> with the party line. <laughs> Yet again, something that us Gen X kids invented and like you know got to experience. Mm-hmm. All right. So, uh, any thoughts on the, any final thoughts on that particular uh, that modem and like connecting and all that good stuff? Any thoughts? Final yeah. thoughts. No. Just I don't have to do it anymore because it was it was time it was very time consuming. <laughs> yeah, now with everything kind of session based, I guess, or IP based, it's you know there. Yeah. I think there's other ways, a lot more efficient ways. But um, yeah. I will say in third world countries, right, other places where phone systems are still relevant, that would yep. probably be, I I think bigger tar- the biggest target if I was still yeah. doing. But yeah, right. totally legit. Right now, it's a lot more trouble than it's worth. There's easier ways to do, to do it. <laughs> right. Totally. All right, guys, let's go on to our next clippy here. Uh, and so You're really into computers, previous to this gosh. scene, yeah. he finds the password uh, under the keyboard of the secretary because he asks her for something. So she doing? goes into another room into this and he looks computer. under her keyboard to get the password that they're using. 
I and tried so, to look for that. I couldn't. I couldn't get it. Unfortunately, there's the password that he stole. Uh, very. <laughs> He's like they change it every year, so it's just a yeah. little variation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think last year was marker or something crayon. <laughs> and then you know he's able to see all everyone's grades. Wow. Okay. Those are great. here's where I'm really yeah. fascinated by this. Is I don't like, think that I deserved it. Do you? Biology two, world I history eleven B. These numbers meant or they, I don't never Can't understood the that? numbering system for schools. Already done. Yeah, you know. They want to look cool like libraries. So. Okay, Catherine. It's not quite the Dewey Decimal System, but... <laughs> Ooh, I it's love the libraries. cards, though. I love going to the libraries and smelling the How cards. How can anybody get a D yes. in home ec? There is something nostalgic about that, man. There really is. is. Like, it yeah. takes it back. Like an old, or even some doing? of the older books. Your biology. Yeah. No, I don't want you to do that. You're going to get... All right, guys, here we go. The, co the ethical conundrum. There, if you, you have the ability to change to your so grades, change and no one would know, yeah, would you do it? I said change it back. Okay, okay. No. No. Yeah, no. Ah! Yeah. Mike's like, yeah, no. <laughs> now, the only reason that I'm saying that I possibly would... Thanks because you that. may have already done it? No, is because, um, well, you know, Fine. schools weren't necessarily equipped to handle those with different minds. So I feel yeah. like I was a little underplayed in some of the testing phases. And, and that's the only reason I say that is because I know nowadays, I know where I sit. I know what's, you know, what's going on in my brain with ADHD and these other kind of things that you yeah. get. Um, but back then, boy, you got kind of left to the side if you really couldn't uh, keep up. So that, so me yeah. going back in there, knowing what I know about computers, oh my gosh, I'd be in there, but like, you know what? I really did study on that thing. Or maybe, I don't know. I would, it'd be conflicting with it. Would be that it would be that. I mean, so I'll tell you why I know for me, right? In college, and I gotta go back to college, right? In college, there was a guy who was actually doing that, going in and changing changing everyone's grade. He would only change for like two classes. The max you could always do was two classes. I graduated. I kept my same one. I was like, no, I earned this grade. This is the grade I'm gonna keep, regardless of what else was going on with me. I was like. Fine, right? Two years after I graduate, they did an audit and they went back. So every grade he changed, all those people lost their degrees. Oh, wow. Because those were in core classes. So everybody lost their degree. And I'm like, mm. my parents called me. And the first thing they said was, did, did you, you get your grade changed? I was like, if I would, you think I would have this grade on my transcript? No. Yeah. So I tell people in my major, my GPA was this. I never say what my overall was on yeah. purpose. Yeah, the... yeah, yeah. Dude, I'm proud of my 3.18. Thank <laughs> you. That's right. it. Wink, wink. <laughs> no, yeah, no. Mm. Yeah. yeah I did not major, cheat I was a 3.0 plus student in my, in my major. It was the other classes. It, thank you. Yes. It didn't, I hate to say it, it didn't matter to me because it wasn't computer science. <laughs> well, here's here's the thing about grades. And I've, I've got nieces and nephews. I'm sure you, if you guys have children, it's like, yeah, grades are important because you do have to have some kind of like, like know how your performance is. But in the grand scale of life, when I see like recent grads post their grades on resumes, I'm like, oh, that's cute. Bless you your take heart. That now. Bless <laughs> you your take heart. that off now. Like no one cares. In, in, in fairness. Yeah. You know, they're, they're like, look, I'm worthy. <laughs> I haven't done anything yet, but I'm worthy. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, well, I, well, or is it I know how to test my teachers or I know how to take tests. And, and you know, yeah. and for a lot of a lot of kids, that was really put at the the top of their priority list. <laughs> oh, damn it. They're going to tell you what it is. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah, no. I, I don't want to get us in trouble, so I'm not going to say I'm encouraging cheating, everybody. Buddy, no one should ever cheat. School. Get well, good you, grades. I do think, though, that that goes back to a little bit of about integrity and why it's so important in cybersecurity specifically. If you go into this field, you must have integrity to do this. Like, otherwise. Yeah. yeah. There is a core. You get placed in a, in a place of trust yes. anytime you're working in cybersec. 
And <laughs> if you, they suspect that you are of low integrity, then they won't trust you and they don't want to employ you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's it is the you know, it, it is something that that is you know really at the at the core of of the profession, right? You look at the uh, the the CISSP, uh, there there's an ethical section to it. Oh yeah, and it's yeah. seriously. <laughs> totally. Uh, so Alfred, okay, so like let's think about this cuz uh, you know, where you're at as you support clients and stuff like that. Like I have to ask, like do you see or do you sense any of your clients having these types of challenges where, you know, they're hacked into like in this case, like the government and let's not talk about like, I, I, I exclude a lot of scenes because people, if you want to watch war games and it sounds interesting to you watch the freaking movie, I'm not going to show you every single scene, but when there is a breach of sorts, like how welcoming are people uh, businesses in to, to have them look at their innards, if you will, like, is there still resistance that you see from clients? <laughs> So um, depending on how severe it is, right, or when it happened um, can also, you know, really propel that because it is such a heartbreaking and just like there's all sorts of feelings and things going on when you're getting stuck with ransomware or somebody's, you know, breached into your keys of the kingdom. Um, no, they I find that most folks are, are they're on edge. They're very there's a lot of feelings going on and they range from all sorts of areas, um, but they are very welcoming to any kind of help that they can get. Like yeah. we have a large department that's just nothing. But, hey, if you've got something bad going on, just call this. And that's all they take care of. But it, um, it, it I, I know on my customer side, when I used to be a customer, I was definitely nervous of people coming in, seeing my environment, seeing what's going on. And then, wow, look, we're exposed and I feel like I've had some kind of shortcoming. But when you've done this for so long and you see the shortcomings of, let's say, RSA, the government, folks that have large budgets with large amounts of money with many different resources, then I don't feel so bad. I'm doing OK with what I got. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I think a good example is. Um, you know what happened to the the, the CISO over there? Mm, yeah. You know he he uh, his uh, approach was interesting, right? Yeah. They 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 got hacked, and instead of kind of coming clean, like, hey, here's what we need to do to remediate it. He said, "Well, how can we sweep this under the rug?" No, you can't. You don't want to. Can't. Do no. <laughs> That's why it's that. it, it is. It's best to disclose it as quick as you yeah. can after you've done your internal. Right, audit and making sure that you're gonna you've you've got what you need to publicly go forward. Yeah. Uh, because the longer you wait, the more exponential. Everybody, yeah. When you've got time, we all defer to the oh my gosh, the worst case scenario. It's it's just like your mom told you. You may as yep. well tell me now because the longer you wait, the worse <laughs> it's gonna be. Yeah, it, it truly is that situation. <laughs> and yeah, and it's so expensive right now, right? And the brand, mm -hmm. it's like, um. I find it there is a it's it's moved in a very positive way. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think I think there's some great opportunities to learn from movies like this, you guys, just in general for real life. But so overall, guys, what, what is your overall assessment as far as and we're not playing any more clips because like I said, darn it, watch the movie. But <laughs> any takeaways that you have just based on some of the, the basic hackings that this kid did, is it applicable today? Can you see this happening a modern version of war games out today because you know Hollywood doesn't know how to create anything anymore. Could we have a modern day war games boot reboot? Yes, I think so. Absolutely. Yeah. It I, it it wouldn't be far fetched to to uh, recreate where someone gets into a system, takes advantage of it, and starts making it uh, think something's going on that isn't. And one of the things that you'll see in other other parts of the movie is just the way he talks to people to get them to react in a certain way so that he can get what he wants. Right. And, you know, and it's not necessarily, hey, I want you to do this so I can do that. I want you to do this so you'll give me something that I can then use to go do that. So he's not even asking them most of the time directly for what he wants to use against them. He'll a lot of times ask them for something that's totally innocuous. Again, yeah. social engineering. Social it feels, 
definitely. Yes. It feels like to me, it doesn't matter how many controls we put in place. We could put a thousand layers of technology in between, but it just takes one person to be like, oh yeah, come on in. Is that what you guys are saying? Are we hopeless? Are we, are we in an eternal yeah. battle? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. oh yeah. Yeah. I think it's a great problem. Place. I think it's a great place for all of us that are doing stuff with that because we know the challenge and it's never going to end unless everything's automated and blueprinted and uh, you you have stuff defined in that kind of manner. But as long as there's people in place that are doing some part of it, there's always going to be a problem. Yeah. Here's your awareness training. Shameless plug for all companies, yes. for anybody listening to this. Get your users trained. Simple. The more you train them, the less likely you are to be a victim of war games. Absolutely. Yeah, the whole uh, the the social engineering part of it is um, totally legit and just totally relevant. Um, a lot of different ways to get that information now. But I would say, you know, we often when they're doing reconnaissance and often doing the social engineering part. Right. Um, I would call the low hanging fruit. And still, that's very relevant today on how most of those kind of. Uh, big exposures and breaches actually come about. So, and you still have a lot of people nowadays that put passwords on sticky notes. Oh yeah, under your keyboard. Yep. Yep. I've seen it with my own two eyes, and you're talking like password, password. You know, guys, capital P password. And gals, do, I, I thought that there would never ever be a time where I have many many different passwords, but I thought that there would never be a time where I knew any of my passwords, which is crazy to think today, right? Uh, five years ago. Um, I, you know, changed everything over to just automated and generated and MFA. And it's like, I have no idea what any of my passwords are. Mm -hmm. And I lost my phone two months ago. Right. Oh, oh no. wow. And so I really put it to the test because they do like a lot of the, the software out there, they make a, they do a good job with trying to think of every scenario that's going to take place. So I can get my, get back in where I need to go. Mm -hmm. But boy, I will say between Uber and LastPass and just trying to go through some of that. Because you don't know until you know, right? And so going through it, I'm like, man, this would be a good option for X, Y, Z to be put here. Or what about this use case? But uh, yeah, to this day, I have no idea what any of my passwords are. <laughs> I did the the recent thing where my my master password to get into the safe is a 20 character, totally random password. See, yeah, See, hey, right? I know. And it's not I, Joshua. Okay, good. Good to I know. Came up with no, no. It's not Joshua. Not <laughs> or yeah, and I did come up with a system right for for remembering it, uh, and it's broken up into into three character bits for the most part. There's a couple of two characters, obviously, to get to twenty. But um, yeah, it it it's it's still helpful now for me to turn on the little eyeball so I can see what what it is I'm typing. Yeah. Because, oh yeah. You know, it's like, what did, is that? Okay, is that. Mm -hmm. So, and finally, they went from like defining colors for characters versus numbers. Man, that was a big one, like O's and zeros, right? Like uh, capital O. And, but they finally have kind of uh, bridged the gap on some of those little areas. Yeah, is it a capital I or is it an L or is it? Yeah. A... Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, now I blocked myself out. Now I got to reset it. Now I got to go to this other email recovery. I got to oh. tell you, as an end user, it's such a pain in the wazoo. And I've said this before, I think us humans are inherently, we lazy. want the open shortest path first, okay? We're OSPF by humanity. Like, we're lazy. Like, what's the minimal bar of entry that we got to get to where we want to go? So yes. what you guys are all talking about to me is like, I think why war games will always <laughs> exist, right? So, oh, yeah. you guys, it's been so much fun talking to you guys, and I really appreciate your time. What did you guys think of this whole uh reaction to war games is this realistic yes 100%. i think so. yeah. most definitely yeah and i think it was a yeah it's a great uh it's a great premise um if you're looking for any candidates i think um enemy of the state would be a good one because there's so many people that look at that one like no way that can they do that and i'm just like okay yeah oh yeah. No yeah think of when that one was put out too it, right, the early nineties, I think it was. It, it was in the nineties, and you know uh, some of the stuff that they were talking about. You know, if you were if you were to watch it again and say, you know, between twenty eleven or twenty fifteen, even you'd be like, "Wow, this is all going on right now." 
Yes. And right. I was former military, so I already knew, like, <laughs> you know, I knew it was kind of out there from the satellite imagery and all of that. And so I just remember watching that with other people, like friends and colleagues, and yeah. they'd be like, no way. And I'm like, okay, you guys uh, have no idea right now. Yeah, but, good. Yeah. Oh, Keep all going. right. Enemy of the state, mental mental note taken. So on that note, guys, because I know we can talk about all day Don't long. Wax swordfish. Throw swordfish in there as well. Hey, that, that was the one I was thinking about. It's like I have to remember the name. That's a top one too, man. That's we could talk all day on that one. Swordfish. Well, maybe, maybe you know what? Maybe you guys need to come back and we'll talk about it some more. How about that? Okay. All right. So awesome. Well, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. So Mike, Lionel, Alfred, you guys are rock stars, and I think this is a great opportunity for us to wrap it up for Checkpoint Real Talk. Thanks again, guys. Thanks, Thanks, everybody. Thank you. That's a wrap on today's episode of Checkpoint Real Talk. If you like this video, hit that subscribe button and some of those other buttons to show us your appreciation. And if you want to learn more or have any questions, please let us know in the comments. We'll see you next time for another episode of Checkpoint Real Talk.